Hello and welcome back to the Mixing Music Podcast. I'm your host DK and with me as always is my lovely co-host Lou Baca. <laughs> I tried. I shout tried. Out, shout out to Strovich for on Discord for posting that one. If you're interested in joining hundreds, uh, I think we have at least like eight or nine hundred other Yeah, uh, we're really close to a thousand. Really close to a thousand other people on Discord server. Come join our healthy active Discord server. Um, come comment, come leave some memes, share your music, get some feedback on Discord. You can go to mixingmusicpodcast.com forward slash Discord. Thank you, Strovich, for posting some Lou nicknames in the uh, Mixing Music Podcast chat. But anyway, today we have a good episode, Lou. Um, also, it's hilarious. Lou Baka, it's, uh, in Japanese, Baka is stupid. Oh, so it's Lou's just stupid. like Lou's stupid Baca, Lou. dude. <laughs> Damn. I just and I just thought of one. We'll use it for next next time. But it's uh, live love uh, Lou. Live love Lou. Live, <laughs> live laugh Lou. Yeah, there you go. Uh, anyway, um, so today we're gonna be talking about something um, a little bit more general, but I think it's very important. Um, we're gonna go into a bunch of tangents, um, but. Lou, why don't you introduce the idea? Because you were the one that wanted to talk about it this week. Yeah, honestly, um, I know a lot of people have uh, either been struggling or reconsidering their career, especially around this time of year. And I think every year it just impressively increases. And let me tell you why. Um, if you don't know already, if you're new to this industry and you're experiencing this for the first time, or you feel like there seems to be kind of a pattern going on. You never really realize it. Well, there's a slow season for music. And that sounds kind of funny. It's not like slow season for seafood or for avocados or whatever, right? We're not talking about ripening our tracks. Um, we're talking about the idea that like during the holidays, you know, people want to go back home with their family. They want to settle down. Um, there's a lot of shopping going on. So there's a lot of money being spent on other things other than their creativity and that's totally normal and the cool thing about this is that kind of gives you time to kind of recalibrate every year but how long does this period last it's roughly four months it's typically november december january and part of february and the reason that i kind of want to talk about this because a lot of people want to start a career like at the start of the new year or you know at the start of a at the end of a year they're kind of looking back and wondering like how everything's going and that's exactly when the see the the work actually slows down and i want to i kind of want to do an episode about the importance of really wanting this and understanding what you should keep as a hobby and what you should make your career uh not because like there's too many people in this or not i don't think there's enough people in music um and in fact the one thing that I learned this year going to like uh, the Grammy parties and everything is that there's actually a pretty high demand for good engineers and good like people in audio. Reason being is that, you know, as more people do it from home and can actually do these things, a lot of people are kind of opting out from taking on these like late night sessions and things of that nature. So it's not that work has disappeared, but, you know, during this time of year. It's normal for it to slow down quite a bit, almost to a halting stop. And you really, really have to take that in note if you want this career. Like you get eight months worth of work in a year and that shouldn't demotivate you. It's something that we had to plan for. And, uh, you know, just everything that we do surrounds the idea of stability over time, right? You want to make this your main source of income. You have to learn how to save. You also have to know how to plan for these downtimes. So this is actually a great point. I think that this, I don't want this topic to be specifically about um, not spending or saving money necessarily, but rather uh, careful planning. Yeah. Especially careful planning as chaotic creatives that we are. Yeah. So to be fair, I think it's pretty obvious that Lou and I, uh, we are adults, but we still have I remnants am? remnants of uh, our ADHD. Actually, we're still pretty aggressively yeah. Uh, ADHD. But uh, that being said, um, that goes against us. Being creative is kind of pushing against us. We have so many things like pushing against us to not be careful and not plan. But that's more reason. That's not an excuse. That's a more reason why you need to cope by planning things. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if you're making more money, then you need to you need to plan ahead for taxes. Yep. You need to 
plan um, as far as like if you're getting mixes and you're booking sessions and you need to plan ahead and be able to update clients. You need to plan ahead for slow months versus fast months. Um, one of the things that you're going to have to accept is exactly what Lou talked about is if you're going to be in a creative self-employed field, then potentially income is sporadic and random. Yeah. Um, you need to plan for that. You no, know, we've done episodes about diversifying your portfolio and diversifying your income streams to help manage slow months mm -hmm. um, and to have like a to increase your general bottom line um, as far as what you make every month, like reliable income. But beyond that, there's lots of things that we can do to uh, create healthy habits um, and kind of curb our creative, chaotic, impulsive energies that are very healthy for the creative field, but not healthy for our financial um, success. So we want to talk a little bit about that. This is this episode is not necessarily about how to make money, but rather like how to uh, keep consistent and make this long, like the longevity be the main point. So, yeah. So this is a big issue, Lou. Every year, and this is an issue that I didn't realize until I started doing better in the music industry. Right. What, the first few years when I was uh, going full time in music, I was poor all year round. Yeah. So I never noticed a slow season because it was always slow. Exactly. You know? yeah. <laughs> like if you started in January, it's up from there. Yeah. 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 So especially out here in LA because most people are are transplants they're not from LA so yep. they go out out of the state to visit family and whatnot um which is less of the case if you're working in Minnesota or if you're working in <laughs> yeah like if I, if I was in Alabama like and all my family was in Alabama why would I need to leave Alabama yeah but if you're in LA chances are your family's not in LA like um being Mexican uh yeah, we migrated here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my family all just decided, like, how about we all go in the same direction? Nobody wanted to spread out. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, this is a real issue. So everybody starts to migrate or go different places, visit family in November, mm -hmm. and they want to chill out. Um, even the music industry on a commercial level, Grammys and everything, like yeah. November, December, everybody chills out. Sync libraries, labels, budgeting, November, December, everything just kind of slows down significantly this really, is across really the board um, everybody gets a break so what do you do to plan ahead i think number one is i would recommend first off not getting into debt we talk about this a yeah. lot as much as possible not getting into debt in fact not as much as possible not at all if possible like not yeah. at all and on top of that i would recommend saving at least 10 to 20 percent off the top every month yeah so if you can, and I know it might just be like a, a little bit of money and you don't have to go overboard with this, but as much as you can save off the top. Uh, so that way you can, when things start getting slower, you can kind of compensate and pay for that. Yep. Um, another thing that I do, which is really important and that you've seen us do with the studio account is mm -hmm. whenever we put money from checkings into savings, mm -hmm. like us dipping into savings to pay for things is it's like, it's not an option. It's, it's voodoo to us. Yeah. It's super taboo. Like we'll, yeah. we'll treat it as if it's like, it's not even there. We don't have access to it. Yeah. Uh, I think that's like really, really helpful as well. Which, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. Cause like just reflecting on that, it's the first year we opened, um, you know, we saw a lot of people with EDD kind of rolling in for them. And so because of that, you know, we were fairly busy with a good variety of like EDD labels. as in money from the government. Exactly. Um, you know, we saw a good variety of like clientele coming from like the, the home studio artists to the label artists like coming in and, you know, people were just working. Um, once that dried up, you know, you saw like a slow season, but we didn't really necessarily slow down all that much. Right. But when it comes to the holidays, that's when we really saw things slow down on all fronts. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be times where you have a lot of clients, whether it be independent artists or labels, but universally, no matter what kind of income was happening, it was always going to be in the holidays, you know? And that's something that we kind of had to like plan for. And then I think like the following year, you know, even playing ground, everybody's all the same, blah, blah. Um, when it came down to the holiday season, that's when both of us were just kind of like looking at the studio, like, man, it really slowed down this year you I'm, know uh, let me say some bold things right now i love my goal right now this year i think is kind of like change my personality i know i've always been honest 
mm -hmm. this year I want to like take it a step further and like piss some people off on purpose. <laughs> I don't, I've never met a DK that didn't. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, but I want to do it on purpose now. Not okay. on accident. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no, basically. Yeah. They're like, I want more of it now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So here's the thing. Um, I'm going to call you out right now. Cool. Is uh, if, if you do not use a calendar actively, like Google calendars or Apple calendars or whatever you use, if you do not use a calendar for your schedule, then you need to quit being a bitch and grow up and you need to quit being a child and grow up. I'm serious. Like that is the most pathetic yeah. thing ever. As an adult, if you do not use a calendar to figure out how are you supposed to, how are you able to increase your efficiency, increase the amount of productivity that you can have in a day, in, like figure out what process things are in, what you need to do. How are you able to, your career is going to suffer incredibly. And honestly, it's not even just career. It's just your personal social life. Like quit being a child, grow up and use, use a calendar. Like that's number one. That's, I know a lot of people that don't even have that baseline going for them. And here's the reason why I make I a I hope nobody deal. our age. Oh dude, it's too many people our age. And here's the reason why I make such a big deal about this sort of stuff is because I'm going to, I'm going to let everybody off the hook a little bit. And, but at the same time, this is also the reason why I'm not letting you off the hook at all. So maybe, maybe we'll see what happens. But as creatives, creatives tend to be a little bit more excited by impulsive decisions, impulsiveness, or, um, it change like, every day. Uh, yeah, like changes in every day. Don't like habits as much as like they like new things happening all the time. Um, they like, uh, yeah, impulsive behavior is very normal. Yeah. Addictive behavior is very normal among be uh, uh, creatives as well. So the reason why we're making a big deal about this is because most creatives are pretty chaotic and thus are not naturally coping by having calendars or having systems to deal with uh, you know, with with order, keeping order in their lives. So this is why, and now this is where I'm going to get you not off on the hook. This is why just because you're bad at something or you're naturally not in tune or inclined to do something means you need to cope by doing it more. It doesn't mean everybody else should cope with you. That's how you lose friends. That's how you don't get successful. What you need to do is cope with everybody else in this scenario. Now, I always talk about how you need to be, um, you need to be, what is it? Uh, you need to be yourself to change the world, right? But in this scenario, you need to change towards the world. Like you need to have a calendar. You need to keep your meetings. You need to like, and basically make sure like Lou has a whiteboard with all of his projects. And it's like, this is what's going on. This is the progress of everything. That's like baseline. Yeah. And I then, can't leave my office without seeing it. <laughs> yeah, and then there's like digital things that you can do free things using a to-do list, whatever it is like these sort of habits, these are baseline. So if you aren't doing that, and then you decide to do it, there's nothing to congratulate. Like, welcome to the standard of living. Like, congratulations <laughs> on, like, doing what's expected. Like, there's yeah. nothing to congratulate you on. Like, and but, I, but I'm going to kick you in the ass right now if I find out you're not using a calendar. I don't care if you're 16 listening to this podcast. You need to have a calendar, if you, like, and get your shit together. Have a to-do list. Have priorities. Lou, like, um, I'm pretty sure you know what right now, like, you prioritize your sessions based mm -hmm. on um, due dates, yep. based on when you receive them and potentially even like how much they're paying. Yep. Um, you know, and it's it, this waking up every day, knowing what's on the list and what's prioritized for you is super important. Yeah. Get, assuming, right? Yeah. How do you kind of prioritize what you need to do during the day or during the week? So typically I actually just give myself like, uh, I guess you could say a personal schedule based on what type of projects I'm working on. So if I'm coming into the studio and it's between like eight and 12, I try to knock out any kind of like meeting based stuff, anything that's kind of like, I guess you could say a little more on the mundane side. Right. So uh, as a good example, this is actually, of that, facts. This is actually yeah. something we could talk about later, like mundane stuff in the morning. Oh, yeah, that's great. Idea. Yeah. Because uh, like this isn't necessarily mundane to me. Like we're, we're recording a podcast like we're this isn't mundane. We're literally just having a conversation in the morning. Right. But the cool thing is what we're doing right now is we're knocking out an episode that will be uploaded uh, potentially next week. Um, later, um, who knows when this will be done. It'll be Secret Sonics I'll be talking with. Um, and then uh, So you got 12, an interview on a different podcast. Yep. Ben Wallach from Secret, Secret yeah, Sonics. Yeah, super cool, dude. Um, but even then, like, 
around 12 to 4. I still had to like master two songs today. So I leave the more creative, fun stuff for after. It's kind of like if you really like one side of your work and you hate the other, do the stuff you hate first so you can end the day on a good note. Okay, let's, let's, let's go on first. about this. Let's yeah. go on about this. So, uh, Number and I don't one, hate this, just to be clear, because yeah, I know no, we're no, doing no, this no, first. No, it's all right. So, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, recording the podcast. It's fun this online. Is, it's, it's super fun. Yeah. But don't get me wrong, audience. It is emotional draining. So if I do like yeah. three podcast episodes in the morning alone, I have DK less emotional drained. energy for yeah. the rest of the day. Which is why we do our morning meetings on Wednesday. And then after that, everybody's like, let's go get food right after yeah, this meeting. Yeah, we get drained. I mean, yeah. and here's the thing. Like, the fact is... All of us, we need to know our limits. All of us only have a certain amount of hours to be creative yep. in a day. Yep. And for me, honestly speaking, I have a max of like three to four hours of like focused creativity. Yeah. I can be creative beyond that. But as far as like attention focused, that's it. Yeah. Like in a day. And so you need to figure out what your limits are and your boundaries are. But so I front load all my work. Yeah. So and everybody should be doing that as well. Like what from the moment you wake up, whatever time that is, by the way, it should be earlier in the morning. There's a lot of psychology and neurobiology going on with the brain that does help. I mean, does help with starting harder things in the morning, waking up at the same time every single day. This is also a way that combats depression. So if you're a creative and you feel like a loser and you're just like depressed all the Start time. Start going to the gym. Well, well, exercise. So, so this is this is this is a uh, this is where I'm gonna have to like say I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a therapist, um, but I do read a lot of these things about the mind, and I understand. I do listen to a lot of podcasts about the mind from actual certified neurobiologists like Andrew Huberman. I love Huberman Labs. That's a great podcast. But anyway, mm. um, psychologists will say like waking up like some of the most important things for combating depression is having breakfast every day and waking up at the same time every day. So not the amount of sleep that you get. It's, it's waking up at the same time every day. And, um, and for men, typically we see for women, we typically see like being heard, like therapy is like a lot about being heard and being understood. Uh, for men, it's, it's a, it's not so much being heard. It's about control, like having. So if like a depressed man will typically feel powerless and they don't have control of their lives. Yeah. Where this is where like, um, for example, why making your bed may be good for a lot of men because it's like the one small thing that you have control over. And then so it's like increased responsibility increases joy and happiness that man can feel, which uh, yeah. is um, I mean, these are generalizations. Right. So it's not across the board. But also it's so it's so it's true enough where you're probably not excluded from taking on responsibility. Like, don't say like, oh, I'm one of the few that don't need to be responsible and I can still be happy. Then you're probably yeah. not that person. <laughs> yeah. You're probably not. the, And that's a very creative thing to do is like assume you're part of the the outliers, the excluded ones, you know, like <laughs> assume that you're always in. Yeah. Assume that you're always. In. That's a great way to put it. Yep. And yeah. uh, so anyway. What we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, so we were talking. Yeah, yeah front yeah, loading. Literally just front load the work. Because if you're the type of person who hates doing certain types of work, like, you know, it's one of my weirdly favorite things to do. The That's reason that. I love doing studio design work um, is I get to plan this giant puzzle. Like, well, okay, uh, forget the invoice, but uh, everything you put on the invoice, like from the monitors to the monitor controller to the cabling, uh, how much it's going to cost to create the wall panels, this and that. It's weirdly stuff I really like to do, but it's not something I'm going to do first. I know that it's number crunching and everything, but it's fun number crunching. You know what I want to do first thing in the morning? I want to do my taxes because it's the first thing I want to avoid. And because it's the first thing I want to avoid, I'm going to have to do that first. Yeah. That way I can good. just reward myself with those weird ass number crunching joys of mine um, on the studio stuff. I, I like Pokemon cards. Cool. I want to open a pack. Guess what? Uh, I changed my habit from uh, uh, just buying a Pokemon card because I got hired for a project. I'm like, yay, reward for getting hired again. No, fuck that. Uh Unless I do a big deal or I do uh, concerts on Fridays, I only do those two options now. And it's kind of like my reward at the end of the week. Like create a reward system. If you like mixing songs and that's what you want to do all day, but you know you have to still you know, manage your finances. You have to check on your overhead costs and everything. You actually have to stay in contact with clients who just want revisions and you don't want to do the revisions. Do those things first. Yeah, amen. Reward yourself with the fun stuff after. Yeah, amen to that. It's, yeah. it's easier. It's emotional. Like the way that I look at my emotional attention and mm -hmm. my ability is like I call them emotional dollars. This yeah. is a concept brought to me. We, my wife and I, we did uh, marriage therapy before we got married, mm -hmm. which is actually a great idea. 
highly recommend. Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of figured out the flaws in our communication before we even got married, which was crazy. Um, but anyway, uh, the therapist at that, that time was talking about emotional dollars, and we only have so many emotional dollars to give out during the day. And oftentimes, for me, who is very extroverted and loves to help others, uh, kind of accidentally spends my emotional dollar before I even get home to talk to my wife. So I need to make sure I save some to give to my wife, you know, mm-hmm. for example, in yeah. that sense. But anyway, there's only so many emotional dollars that we have and it's best to kind of knock those things out at the beginning of the day and uh, do the easier stuff later. Yeah. Um, I also, this is a personal thing uh, and I want to give three practical tips as well a little bit later after this, but this is a personal thing. I also noticed that um, I split my day up into two segments. I have a morning shift, right? And an evening shift like Mm. after lunch and I split it with lunch and a run or any sort of like exercising or just like unfocused, you know, video games, whatever it is. Typically a run is the best thing um, because that kind of resets everything that boosts my testosterone levels from working out my quads. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of like uh, I'm ready to deal with stress and to kind of cope again. Uh, I know for that may not work for you. That may work for you. But the point is I've spent the time to figure out what does work for me. And that's what does work for me. You know, what doesn't work even though people try to make it work, is 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. sessions. Just really messing oh, up your, your circadian rhythms. I know some people need to be exhausted, tired to get the creative juice out. Uh, but do, I don't know about you, but I feel like all of my creative ideas happen like 30 minutes before I go to bed. But I still have to kind of keep it in check. So I don't know if I told you this, but um, uh, one of my bigger clients, their manager hit me up saying like, hey, uh, just needed to know if you're available this day. Uh, from 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. I was like, oh, for what? It's Oh, it's for one of the records with a big artist. I'm like, unfortunately not. Is there a way we could do it at 10 a.m.? And it's now become the thing for me. Like, I don't care what the credits are. Like, I'm not doing late nights anymore. I'm not doing the whole overnight. Like, I, I could potentially lose out on a Grammy. I understand. But it's not worth my piece. Yeah, and that's, that's the lesson that we learned from Bob Horn when he yeah. talked about how he lost almost his health in his life. Yeah, honestly speaking, it's um, like uh, one of the big examples that I always give on my personal line is just like, uh, I'll never forget when Anna told me that she's like, you know, I see you working and I see you focusing. Like, do you want to just, you know, break off what we have so you can focus on what's in front of you? And I'm and I kid you not, it was it was a huge eye opener because I did not realize how much like like you said, how much spending my emotional dollars elsewhere, putting so much focus into other things would throw your actual life out of whack. Mm. Like, uh, Anna means enough to me to say that I would rather choose her than continue the late nights in potential of a Grammy. The potential of a Grammy is great and all, but I still want that home life. There you go. If anything, when I retire, what would I have at home if there was nothing at home? Oh, yeah. No, you for know, sure. Like, what, who am I, I passing my legacy to? I'm, I think about that all the time. Like, yeah. I have kids. And my finish line, the reason why I'm making money, the reason why I want rewards, awards at the end of the day Mm -hmm. is so I can spend time with my family. Yeah. And here's the thing. I can just choose not to pursue those things and I can have that now. Yeah. I can spend time with my family now, you know? Uh, And I heard the worst advice I've ever heard is, is this is so crazy to me. I don't know why. The worst advice I've ever received from someone significantly older than me when I asked for parenting advice, they said, hey, focus on making money now because they won't remember this time of their life when they're like two to four years old. They won't remember this time. So spend money now. Dude, that's the worst advice I've ever heard. Because then you get in the yeah. you get in the habit of overworking yeah. and not seeing your kids. Like imagine when you finally start making a lot of money, that means you're probably doing have a less lot time. more work. Yeah, yeah. you're a lot yeah. busier. You know, so it's, dude, the, the, ah, dude. You I know, know, I actually recently spoke to a family member because um, of this project that I took on and, uh, You know, he's an accountant and everything. And uh, I was like, hey, you know, just have a few questions for you. He's like, all right, cool. You know, we got to talking and he told me, he's like, hey, you know, I've seen you working. Just want to let you know, like, I know we don't see you around at a lot of family parties. And one, like, there was multiple parts of what he said that, like, kind of hurt. He's like, I know we don't normally see you at family parties. I think the last time I went to a family party was like once in the last year. Yeah. Did you, you know? say I don't go to family parties because you approach me like this every time I come to one? No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no he's actually a great cousin and all that. But like it was it was just kind of funny. It was one of those where I was like, damn, like that's one of the things I've been trying to work on. And like that's the thing. It takes a lot of work. And he tells me he's like, you know, um, he he's done very well for himself, owns multiple houses, rents them out and all that kind of stuff. And the funny thing is like. 
you know, we see you working and we see all the accolades. We just want to let you know we're proud of you and this and that. I'm like, oh, thanks. I'm like, well, it looks like things are going well for you too. He's like, well, you know, owning multiple properties is a lot more work than people make it out to be. It's not like I make a ton of money. And I'm like, you know, you could say the same exact thing about people in music. You know, we go to the Grammys, we do all these things. It doesn't mean that we're actually doing enough, uh, doing all that much. And, you know, keep in mind, this guy's got 13 years on me, right? Uh, he said, you know, if there's one thing I learned, and this would be my only piece of uh, unsolicited advice to you, it's uh, don't lose sight of uh, your work-life balance. He's like, I'm gearing up to be 50 now, and that's my one regret in life. I made a ton of money. Dude, everybody but says that. Everybody says it. And everybody the, older says that they wish they worked less hard. Yeah, but he also mentioned, he's like, by the time Not, my kid turns 18, I'll be 60. That's crazy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he's like, I wish I had my kids sooner. I wish I actually focused on my family sooner. Yeah. Yeah, well. and that to me was like, coming from a family member that's like, you know, you see people doing other industries as well. It's not just music. It, no matter what industry you're in, it, that work-life balance is so hard and fragile to maintain that it's part of the reason that you see a lot of people quit our industry because the slow season hits. They feel like they're not doing enough. They have lost control of their work, their income, everything. But if you've pushed so hard that you forgot to, you know, go home, you know, go touch grass, be around friends. Go touch it, grass. Yeah, hey, I'm just saying some of us stay in the studio 12 hours a day, you know? Yeah. Um, you wouldn't believe the amount of depression one can build up and you won't know it until you experience it. And by the time you're experiencing it, it's too late to avoid it. You're experiencing it, you know? And so, you know, a big part of this, like coming out of the slow season now is like, Hey, now that things are going to get busier, keep this in mind. Like if you want longevity in this industry, there's everything from getting yourself organized, making sure your overhead is low, everything, but like more than anything don't forget the reason you got into this industry. Don't lose the love. Uh, out of, um, yes. So with spontaneous and impulsive creatives, it's very, for some reason, there seems to be this thing where I think it's like just the, the amount of chaos and the lack of order. I feel like depression and anxiety and like mental health is much a much serious problem than the logical or lawful side of the population. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is like uh, an artist saying that they've attempted to take their own life or hurt themselves at, at some point in their life is, is not an uncommon story. No, it's like, in fact, it's weird if they haven't felt that way. You know, yeah. At any yeah. Point. It's like, it's, it's a, which is a really, really sad. Um, and also I bring that up to point out how important it is to take care of yourself. Now, here's the deal. Yeah. There's, I want to bring up three tips. This is specifically taken from Andrew Huberman from Huberman Labs. Uh, the podcast, which I do recommend you go check out. He also recently did an interview with Rick Rubin. Uh, mm -hmm. Rick Rubin just released a new book about the power of creativity and how to access the creative mind, um, which is, I heard it's really great. And Rick Rubin is is a music production legend. If you don't know who that is, you're missing out. Anyway, uh, Andrew Huberman, as a neurobiologist at Stanford, right? Mm -hmm. He says three specific things which are really important to help your day better. Um, and this is proven by science. Number one is to decrease stress. So your brain and your body naturally does this subconsciously, sometimes when you're awake, but even when you're asleep. So he calls it a, um, the, you, you, to de-stress when, when you feel pent up and you feel like you have a lot of stress. You breathe in through your nose, big breath. And then you, you breathe two short breaths through your nose to increase the, like to pop open the extra capillaries in your lungs. Real quick like that, and then you exhale out your, your mouth real slow. So one more time. And that's, that's, that's uh, I forgot what he calls it, but that's one way to release stress. And you can only yeah, feel weirdly like it feels nice. So what it yeah. does is those, you fill up your lungs all the way, and then you try to fill it up a little bit. You force a little bit more, which opens up the lungs just slightly more, so you get more ex oxygen, oxygen, and then you let go of the carbon dioxide and you release and that release is where the de-stress comes. Number mm -hmm. two, he's a big fan and he always talks about uh, looking into sunlight, not like at the sun. Don't look at the sun. Yeah. Don't damage your eyes, but it is incredibly <laughs> Stare at the sun. <laughs> there you go. It is incredibly <laughs> important, especially for those of us that live in the studio cave, studio rats that never leave the studio that have a hard time. Like I have so many friends that have a hard time going to bed on time, waking up early that 
that combination of don't have the discipline to do that, but also they tend to be effective and creative at night. Like night owls is a really normal thing. It's a real thing. So in order to keep your circadian rhythms in check, um, one thing that you should do every morning is this doesn't work through windows and it doesn't work through windshields as well. Like go outside as fast as you can. Rick Rubin talked about this as well, but from a non-scientific standpoint, go outside and look at the direction towards the sun. You know, like just don't look at the sun, but like, Get out of the shadow and get in the sunlight. And that'll kind of reset everything. Your, your eyes have brains. Like literally, so uh, uh, Andrew Huberman, he says your eyes and your, your, the behind the eyes is the only part of the brain that's outside of the skull. So it's got its own function going on. Mm. Actually, did you know that your eyes have their own immune system? And if your body ever found out, if your regular immune system ever found out the foreign objects, which is your eye, um, you would go blind. Your white blood cells will kill your vision. I did not know that, and that's an, an insane self destruct button. So, like, just you, waiting to be yeah, clicked. it's like yeah. so. You should really intently focus on the fact that your eyes are. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and maybe your body will respond and just make you blind. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Don't do that. Uh, but anyway, so the eyes are important receptacles for, or receptacles, uh, <laughs> a receiver of sunlight, and it kind of resets circadian rhythm. The third thing that he recommends is this is actually to help uh, remove midday crash. So if you have coffee in the morning, if you're a big coffee drinker or an energy drink drinker, um, this is very important. So uh, I don't exactly remember how cortisol affects the body. I think like you need to, the cortisol is what makes you drowsy or whatever. I don't, or removes drowsiness. I don't remember which one it is, but something with cortisol levels has to reset every morning. So if you drink coffee directly in the morning, first thing in the morning, then what happens is that the cortisol levels don't reset enough, so you're going you're gonna to crash and burn by midday. So mm. he recommends waiting 90 to 120 minutes before drinking your cup of coffee. So wake up, get in the sun as quickly as possible for like 5 to 20 minutes is kind of his recommendation. He, he, he says 10 to 30, 5 to 10 to 20-ish. Uh, just go out in the sun, get that sunlight, um, and come back. Do your morning routine, brush your teeth, whatever, take a shower if that's what you do. Go do your morning emails or whatever. Come back and drink coffee, get caffeine two hours after you wake up, hour and a half to two hours after you wake up. And that's that's how you reduce or minimize or even get rid of that midday crash. Interesting, huh? Yeah, actually. I might have to try that and just go in the backyard, look at my dogs and be like, mm, I need coffee now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great because for those yeah. of us that have windows on the east side of our homes that like the window, like the sun comes up mm -hmm. and there's direct sunlight. Have you ever been in a hotel or like in your room? No, my, my room actually has that. The downside is that uh, um, we have neighbors with really high up homes. Yeah. And so like we can see each other from each other's windows kind of thing. Um, so we have very dense curtains. Which the is the curtains. most self-defeating thing for morning yeah, yeah, sunlight. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, blackout curtains are important as well. So uh, Andrew Huberman talks about like for those that struggle to sleep, like blackout curtains at night. So from street lamps or anything else, like that's really important. Um, but yeah, in the morning, have you ever like opened the windows and then all of a oh sudden you God. just like wake up? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there's yeah. like, there's like a physical sensation. It's like, oh, where did that sleepiness go? So one of the things that um, we installed in one of my client's studios is uh, they're on Amazon. They're like these little robotic curtain openers and we programmed them to open up at eight in the morning and to close at 6 p.m. Um and so as they're closing, you can actually program the time in which it's actually closing. So it starts to set oh, the lighting kind of. Mm -hmm. um, the amazing thing that he told me is like, you know, it actually has taught me like when to be in the studio and when to leave the studio. Because when the curtains are closed, I now just associate with you shouldn't be in here, mm. you know, and when the curtains open, he associates that you should be in here. This is what the time that you should be working. And this is the time you shouldn't be working. Mm. And weirdly enough, um, he told me that he bought an extra pair for his room because he liked that so much. And apparently it opens at six in the morning because he has one of those townhouses out here in Hollywood where he sleeps on the third floor. And because of that, his window is on the east side of the house. Oh, nice. And so he's like, I've never woken up in my life without an alarm clock. But this sunlight is just the natural wake up. I feel more refreshed than I ever have. And it's all because the curtain opens at the perfect timing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. Uh, I used to, um, 
I used to set an alarm. It was actually like a sound alarm, but I had also at that time the lights would come up like five minutes before I wake up. Like the lights would turn yeah, on, like the Philips. The time, light. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, the time lights. I'd have like a wake up time on them. That helps so much. Yeah, like yeah. you, you wake up even without sunlight. Like just the lights turning on is such a refresher. Like the worst thing that you can do for both your brain for motivation and just like it's not just like waking up in circadian rhythms. But Huberman talked about how. Uh, it's also for like motivation and your ability to cope with stress. Like mm -hmm. the worst thing that you can ever do in the morning is wake up in a dark room, pull out your phone and immediately go for dopamine releases, like dopamine hits of like social media and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the worst thing that you can do. You'll be less motive motivated for the day. Your body will be more tired. Yeah. You'll feel less relaxed. You'll feel more tired throughout the day. It's not just a morning thing. It'll affect your entire day. Not only is it just like going for the dopamine hit, but a lot of people, let's be honest, we all compare ourselves. Like imagine waking up in the morning and you strive to be this thing and you're frustrated from where you currently are only to the th first thing that you do in the morning is to compare yourself yeah. instead of just waking up and saying, I need to well, do I this. don't really look at social media to compare. No, no, no. A lot, but I know a lot of I'll, people I'll call, do. Let's I, call I, you the outlier I literally just seek entertainment. So we'll call you the outlier because a lot of people follow accounts that showcase people, what they aspire to be. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They naturally do. Yeah, like if you were a Rick Rubin fan and you saw all the things that Rick Rubin is doing, you'd be inspired by Rick Rubin, right? I, but let's say that you found some random dude that's doing all the things that you want to do. You have no emotional tie to this person. You would kind of compare yourself and be like, wait, this guy's only been doing this two years. How is he so big? How's he? I've been doing this three. I've been doing this four. And it doesn't actually help you to wake up with this kind of mindset to to be looking at other people. I try not to look at social media at all until like the end of the day. And I say I tried to because we naturally like, have you ever opened your phone and you just naturally gravitated to it? Like, I remember one time I was trying to open Wells Fargo to check my bank account. And instead, I just naturally went to Instagram. I'm like, how the fuck did I end up here? Yeah, yeah, I've you been know? noticing that. I know yeah. people who uninstall social media on purpose just to make sure that they don't go on it. And then they'll install it when they need a post. Yeah, it's it's a very um, time consuming process, but um, it's a very toxic process that I've even found in myself. No, it's true. The, I like how this episode went from preparing for the slow season into self-discipline. But that's that's kind of where I wanted to go. So I'm, yeah. I'm really glad that this is what it turned into. Self-discipline is, is incredibly important and honestly is is one of the keys to increasing your income. Yeah. A strong, very heavy key, underrated. And here's the thing, dude. Uh, people that are undisciplined have excuses out the wazoo. Yeah. And some of those excuses, honestly, are valid. And that's what's unfortunate. Yeah. For example, if someone that looks exactly like me mm -hmm. or like one of like your cousins or whatever who's Hispanic says like, I don't, or like a woman, right? A Hispanic woman is like, I don't get enough work because I'm a Hispanic woman. And that becomes an actual excuse, which is a valid thing. Like there, yeah. it is difficult for a Hispanic yeah. woman in the music industry. But as soon as you accept that and say that to yourself, then you just built your own wall yeah. as well. It makes it twice as hard. And it's, that's the unfortunate thing is that it's valid. So that's why it's extra unfortunate because you can really dive into that and dig your yeah. own grave. One of the biggest things that they tell you, uh, when, uh, when you're trying to lose weight and things of that nature, like coming from like a, a fat person body, right? Um, they're like, stop calling yourself fat. Stop acknowledging that you're fat. Start acknowledging that you're losing weight. Start acknowledging the little wins that you have in your body's progress. Because the more you start saying, even if it's a joke, even if you're just joking like, oh, yeah, I'm just a tubby guy. Oh, I like food, you know, things of that nature. And I make those jokes all the time. It's naturally going to make you kind of lean into it a little bit because you don't see it as much of a problem because you've made a joke of it. It's no longer a serious thing. And because of that, you'll never take it seriously. Well, I mean, going back to my previous thing that you were talking about, you specifically, you, I think you brought this up either. I don't know if it was on the podcast or if it was off mic, but you talked about how you don't feel like you've lost a lot of weight, but you're still really happy and confident yeah. because you're putting in the work. Yeah. And that's an exact example of what we were talking about earlier, which is about men needing control power yeah. over things so like the fact that you have accepted the response the difficult responsibility of going to the gym a certain amount of times during the week already that alone without losing any weight yeah. has made you feel more confident and feel better about yourself. oh yeah and then if you keep doing that of course the habit will make yeah. you lose weight it's inevitable this is one of those things too it's like uh, and and there's a lot of people and i'm going to use weight as an example because this is something that we all relate to yeah um one is that 
Everybody wants to be in shape. There's not many people out there. In fact, I can almost generalize enough to say there's probably no one out there that if they had a button that they could push that would make them in shape, fit, you know, oh, in hell yeah. 30 I'd, seconds, I'd hit that button everybody 40 would hit that times. button. Yeah, you, everybody yeah. would hit that button. Yeah. Nobody wouldn't. No, It doesn't matter about self-love. Everybody would push that yeah. button, right? Like I'd go have a big ass dinner right after eating that, uh, hitting that button and hit it again just to reset the dinner. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Everybody would push that button. But how many people are going to start counting calories. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? I'll, it's I'll like be people honest. Will be I on still Twitter don't be like, want to. You know, the people have give, <laughs> here's the problem with like, with um, like not fat shaming and like self love or anything like that. The problem is, mm -hmm. is not that you're big or like someone's big. The problem is you being big is affecting how you think and it's making yeah. you up. It's making you. So like as a friend, Lou, when you weren't working out like a year ago, mm -hmm. it's like, I didn't give a shit that yeah. you were big. Yeah, I I gave a shit that you couldn't stop talking about it because you cared about it. Yeah, you know, like if you love yourself and you're big and you don't think about it, which which I doubt that's the case. Everybody, everybody that's bigger thinks about it. Even I'm yeah. smaller and I think about it. Which, by the way, this is another thing. I'm gonna get on another tangent. Cool. If you ever say that I'm thin because of my good genetics, then then fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. You do not realize how much work I put into not drink sodas, to not eat snacks, to eat healthy portions. I count my calories. How often I run and exercise. Fuck you if you kind of swipe under the rug how much effort I put into stay thin, especially at my age. Yeah, I mean you saw how much thicker I got. Like even with good genetics, I got yeah. thick over like the last couple of years. Dude, even my sister who's going to the gym with me now, she could eat whatever she wanted growing up, never gained a pound. In fact, she was like, her doctors would always like, eat more. You need to eat more. And she's like, I am scarfing down burgers. Yeah. Like, what do you want me to do? Dude, I hate it when now, people, oh. Now? Yeah, oh, now she's like, oh yeah, I gained the weight. Now yeah, I have to go dude, to the gym. It's now I, it's got to come off. Dude, I, fuck, I fucking hate it. Like, I genuinely hate it so much when people, like, even people call me talented. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck you, dog. Yeah. Like, you think I'm talented? You think I was born with this skill? You think I'm better than you in some natural capability? What you, when you ever you say that, mm -hmm. it's like you're just denying the amount of fucking work I yeah. put into this thing. You know how difficult it is to be disciplined? How difficult it is to set goals and to achieve them? How oh, yeah. difficult it is to you know count calories to go to the gym every single week oh, yeah. Lou you know how f that shit's not easy to read books to look up this research to make this podcast people are like you got lucky dog or you're very like I'm very like you're very talented yeah they don't they Bro, don't I fucking had a stutter when I was a kid I used to have a bad stutter dude yeah and now here I am making money from speaking <laughs> <laughs> Actually. fuck you if you think I'm talented that is yeah. the biggest disrespect ever and here's and this is where I'm going to bring it up again. Like when you're young, when you don't have money, when there's no success, it feels unreachable, unattainable. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what you don't see is the potential decades of great habits people yeah. have had over the years. Now, there's a lot of people, a shit ton of people that have success that did not deserve it. But I'm telling you right now, if you want to turn the tables, if you came from a four, poor family, if your parents were poor, my dad used to be very poor. My, my grandparents were farmers. They literally made money, barely making money selling potatoes in Idaho, dog, in Wyoming. Yeah. Like, if, if, if you are poor, bro, or if you, if, if you grew up poor, you can change that shit around by taking care of yourself, accepting the responsibility. Not only will you be happier, you can change your generation. You can take care of your family. You can mm -hmm. take care of your parents. You can take care of future generations by getting your shit together. If you hate reading, then go fucking read a book because it's not necessarily only about the knowledge contained in the book. It's about being able to do shit that's hard and being proud of yourself and building self-confidence. I'm confident. You're confident because we both have done hard hard things and we continue to know that we are able and capable of accomplishing difficult tasks oh it, yeah it's and i'm getting passionate right now because i'm so i'm like genuinely like there's this this understanding is what makes a friend a close friend someone that i love so much takes them from a fucking can't get out of their bedroom incel into into an elite high performing man or woman Mm -hmm. Right. Is is it's not a breakthrough. It's not a moment. It's every day 
being a little bit better. Yeah. It's every day building successes. It's things like, and this may not be for you, but in general, this is a good thing. If you've, if you've had that feeling that you want to quit drinking, right? And you don't have to have this feeling, but if, if you're in mind, you're like, drinking is not healthy for me, um, then you should fucking quit drinking, right? If you don't feel that, it doesn't matter. If you feel like, listen to your body, listen to your mind. If you feel like you need to stop watching pornography and stop masturbating every single night, you dirty incel, then what you need to do is fucking stop. If diarrhea is coming from Taco Bell meals, maybe stop, stop. eating type Taco listen Bell. Listen to your body. Listen to what <laughs> yeah. you need. And everybody's different. Everybody's yeah. different. Like there's, there's a lot of people out there that can drink healthy amounts and it's like it doesn't affect them at all. But you know what's affecting you. You know what's not helping. And you need to listen to yourself. You need to be super honest with yourself and create that discipline. And it's just so sad. And I'm getting upset on behalf of all the listeners. And I'm just thinking about all these super close friends, man. Yeah. So many super close friends where it's just like, how many times have somebody reached out? Like, I want to do this. It's like, that's great. But you almost can't take it seriously anymore. And, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. And here's the dangers of me saying this sort of stuff is that what, it, when I say these sort of things, there's like, there's an essence of like grandstanding or virtual signaling mm -hmm. saying that I'm better. And that's why I can say this stuff. I'm doing this stuff, which is why, and here's, let me be a little bit vulnerable here. And I'm sure that you can too, Lou which is difficult for all of us. I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. And I go out of my habits all the time. Yeah. I lose habits all the time. I get worse all the time. I forget to do things. I slack. I ghost people. I, I miss meetings. I show up late. I forget. Like I, there, I mess up a lot. Yeah. You know, and we all do. The difference is, and the difference is, man, is that, I accept my responsibilities and I try my very, very best to not make excuses, especially my valid excuses. Mm -hmm. I'm not a morning person. I'm not a runner. You know, I'm, I'm my, I have uh, you know, like uh, whatever it is. I'm, I have ADHD, mm -hmm. right? These, these valid excuses. I'm an indigenous Brown guy. Yeah. You know, like, that looks Hispanic. <laughs> hey, I'm, so, an, I, I'm a, I'm an LA born brown guy who doesn't look brown at all. <laughs> even though his last name translates to dark. Is that really? What yeah, Moreno to? is dark. Oh, that's hilarious. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, there's these, there's these things. It's like, but you got to choose, dude. There's we've had we've had a lot of like, can I big shout outs? Um, I'm not gonna name names, but we've had, uh, especially recently, we've we've there's been a few women intern on our mm -hmm. team and you can tell the difference. Oh yeah. There's been a couple that were like, and, and I'm going to call it out too. Like there's been a, like a couple women on our team that were like very pro women in the music industry. And it should be, I'm mm -hmm. also very pro women in the music industry. Oh yeah. Um, but there's, there's something about like, they just keep like every day they bring up the fact that they're not getting the opportunities because they're a woman. Like they and bring yet, it up like every conversation. And I'm I'm gonna venture to guess that I know don't where you maybe going. No, 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 don't worry. We're, we're, no. we're no, we know who, but like, don't worry. Don't no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, but there's been a standout. There's there's been um, a very specific standout, and it's it's something I was thinking about the other day, and I actually brought it up to one of the people that used to work with us, because um, they asked like, "How's everything going?" Uh, I've noticed that there's more women in the mix, and I was like, "Yeah," and there's actually one that has not only completed all of their onboarding in less than a week, but also all their shadowing in a week. Dog. She is also the one that's most on top and actually is probably the most likely next up for like consideration I, on different things. And I think you know who I'm talking about because it's, it's very evident in the work, but at no point has there ever been a mention of lack of opportunities or anything. They just put in the work. And because of that, I've already been talking to other people like I would likely choose this person for considerations in the future because I like their work ethic because it's about the work and what they're doing and what they want to do versus complaints about what's possible and not possible due to one thing or another. I will give opportunity to those who work. And you know that when we started the studio, I said, I don't like schedules for interns because those who want to show up will show up. Those that don't won't. And even with schedules, we see people who don't show up. We see people who show up late or just don't remember that they even scheduled it themselves. But this person has time and time 
showing proof that like, yo, just put in the work and people will take note. I kid you not. She has outdone most of the male staff. And because of this, it's even that much more like whatever your excuse is, don't lean on it. Yeah. Imagine if every, imagine if every woman was like that, or if every indigenous person was like that, or every, every oh my God, was like that. they just didn't complain. They worked hard. The, the stereotype would change. Yeah. The stereotype yeah. would change. Yeah. You know, um, and, and this is crazy because let's, let's go like in the other perspective, women that are already successful that are doing well. Yeah, sure. They make mention of it sometimes. Yeah. But it's not like part of their identity. No. In fact, I've met more successful women that refuse to bring that up as a topic. Yeah. And, and dude, there was one time where like something happened in the studio and they're like, oh, is, are you saying this because of identity? Insert identity thing here. And yeah. I was like, no, it's because you suck as a human being. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no, nah, it's, it's not because you're this or that. It's because you suck. <laughs> yeah. And people are just unable to like their, their brain and their ego is just unable to accept. Like, that. I kid you not. Uh, I think I told you the story before where like, um, one of our mutual friends, uh, I asked her to, Hey, like I have to go work Nam. Uh, can you take over this concert for me? And it's, it was a big concert and everything like sold like 2000 t- t- tickets at a local venue and everything, which is really high for the venue. Cause it went over capacity. Um, the group had traveled across the world to perform, right? And I'm like, I can trust you with it. No questions asked on my end. I was like, whatever you need, I got you. I go to Nam. I get a call from the venue owner. Like, hey, who who's engineering the show? Is it your assistant? I'm like, no, it's the girl that's there with him. He's like, it's her? I'm like, yes. He's like, does she know what she's doing? I'm like, yes. Has she done any shows before? Yes, leave it alone. It's going to be fine. Like, there that is, does happen. There there is, is valid. situations. But the funny thing is, those who actually work know who is actually doing the work and who's complaining about the work. And the funny thing is, she also has never really complained about the work, and yet she is part of these organizations. She does want to help, and yet she's never been one to ever like have the conversation with me saying, like, oh, there's never opportunity, because we both know that's never been a case in our relationship. I think most times when these complaints kind of come up, it's not necessarily because they're not true or they're exaggerated. I think it's coming from a point of frustration where it's like, Hey, I'm not really seeing the results. But a lot of times the reason we don't see results in anything we do is because we're not actually putting in as much work as we are claiming to. Yeah. There's, there's, um, now this is different because with friends make this, we're real. We started one place and we're at a totally, we flew across the country to a different, Different city right now, but uh, as far as topics topics go, but um, you know what doesn't sound satisfying? Now this is different from making friends. Like I love making friends. They're like DK. I decided to give you a chance because you're also Japanese and I'm Japanese too. And it's like it's it's something yeah. we can connect on. But as far as like work, I can't imagine, um, like being hired not because I'm good or they know my work, but strictly based on an identity that I have. Mm. You know. Like, hey, you're also an indigenous island boy, you know, uh, let's let me give you work. And it's like, what if I suck? Like, and there's like, yeah. there's something about it. It's like, I don't want to have work just because of my identity. Like, I want to have work because I'm good. Yeah. Because you think I'm good, you know, like, I want you I want you to be proud of me or the client to be proud of me or be impressed or something like that. There's something self-satisfying that anyway, we're getting on a very different tangent here. Um, I want to be very clear. I'm very proud to say that at In The Mix Studios, our studios, we have a very, very diverse group of people. And yeah. we we 100% believe in giving everyone equal opportunities. Oh, yeah. I'm also 100% transparent and call people out if they start making excuses. And I'll be like, no, no, that, that's, yeah. but that's the love. You know, that's because I have love. You were talking about this. We were talking about this the other day. Not dire- I, I don't know if we did, but like um, we were talking about the value of honesty. Yeah, no, I, I brought it up during the master class where I'm like, yo, get you a friend or a spouse or both that can be fucking honest with you and call you out on your bullshit. You know what? When, when, and, and here's the thing too, because this was something recent, like it was very uncomfortable for me, mm-hmm. but I still decided to call you out in person for something that was bugging me. Oh, yeah. And it was, it, and what that happened, you know what? When I tell, when I, f- I find myself, when I'm honest with people and I tell them directly, no matter how uncomfortable it is, I don't have a desire to talk behind, be- about them behind their backs. Yeah. Like me talk gossiping or talking behind their backs completely disappears if I talk oh, yeah. to them directly. Oh yeah. 
So if I find myself gossiping or like talking shit about people behind their backs, it's probably because I'm not assertive enough and and willing to be uncomfortable enough to tell them directly. Yeah. Like there's been times, especially recently, now that I'm paying attention to it the last couple of years, like I've stopped mid conversation and been like, you know what? It is inc- incredibly unenjoyable to to talk to you. Like I'll, I'll straight up stop a conversation. <laughs> it's like you are un- incredibly yeah. in, unpleasant to talk to. Yeah. This conversation is very unpleasant. And like we either need to change this up or we need to stop. Yeah. Like I'm not going to continue to pretend like I'll be that. Like, there's something about anyway. My life has changed for being honest. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But uh, assertiveness is important. Anyway, more not assertiveness, but more so honesty. Um, and, and also in lines with don't be a jerk. Don't be a dickwad. Uh, <laughs> some, somewhere <laughs> along those lines. Anyway, we got on a big tangent. Uh, be prepared. Be disciplined. Um, on this episode, honestly... Uh, if you're interested in more technical tips, I know that we do a lot of stuff. If you've been checking out our Thursday episodes of our exclusive archives, which is exclusive episodes that released about a year or so ago, we have two exclusive episodes released every single week on mixingmusicpodcast.com forward slash exclusive for $4 a month or $40 a year. You can sign up and get two extra episodes that are only technical. They're only about compressors, EQs, mixing, mastering, songwriting, production tasks, like habits, made um, techniques that are presented by Grammy winning, award winning, big influencers and producers, engineers, whatever. Go to mixingmusicpodcast.com forward slash exclusive for that content. Um, I want to end it off with this on a very, very positive note is that the cool thing about your success being based on discipline and self-control is that it's 100% up to you. Seriously, it's a, that's it's like so. That's the best thing. The yeah. best thing about like if if your biggest flaw to you is that you're overweight, that is the best flaw to have. Oh yeah. Like I mean, assuming that you consider it your own flaw, yeah. right? Um, and then that is the best one to have because you can change that. Yeah, that is in control. If, it's if, something that's yours that nobody can take away. It's you know everybody knows I like Pokemon cards. There's a difference between buying the card you want and pulling the card you want. Yeah, some people got it and that's cool. Yeah, but like there's a ugly, difference when it's tell yours. You you're ugly. You yeah. can, I can't change. Like <laughs> yeah, literally. If you worked for it, if you worked for it, you know you. Let's say you got into the audio industry and. You know, I tell you right now, if you made it through this slow season, keep fucking going. Mm. Keep going. You made it through the hardest part of the industry, which is the part where that has no jobs, no money to give because it's all going to other things, you know, that are, you know, arguably more prior prioritizable than your creative arts job. Let's be honest. We're in the creative arts industry. It's very volatile. Uh, But with that said, it's amazing when you can take control of it and actually make it work. But you have to have discipline. You have to have self-control. You have to make sure that you budget properly, that you find your work and make good relationships that will actually sustain you throughout your career. Sure. Let's say that you do 50 jobs in a year and only two of them were consistent clients. Guess what? I bet you if you continue doing good work with them, they'll be consistent clients every year. And every year you can find two more. After 10 years, you have 20 consistent clients. You're not trying to market yourself on Craigslist anymore or Facebook anymore. In fact, like I've gotten to the point in my career where I don't do any like really posting. I did some posting recently and I turned down every single job that came through. Yeah. Not not because I'm bougie or anything, not because they couldn't afford me, but because 90% of them really just did not fit what I was looking to do or what, what I was capable of. And it was work that really just didn't fit my progressive nature. So I passed them off, you know, and that's kind of the cool thing. Now, after you build it up, you get to be that person, but you have to build it. You have to take control and make these actions just habitual. You know, you want nice gear, learn to find more work and learn to budget yourself for that nice gear. You can't just make three grand and buy the gear and then wonder what you're going to do about your taxes. That's true. You know, and a lot of people get scared. That's within your control. That's within your control. Yeah, literally. Everybody gets scared around the holiday season because aside from the work slowing down, right after January hits, guess what? Now you may have to pay taxes. And then everybody's like, oh, man, I don't make enough money. It's like, no, you probably made enough, but probably didn't invest it properly. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. And this is a big problem with Americans specifically. Um, if you have uh, five to 10 grand and no debts, you're in the top 1% of wealth. Yeah. And that's that's pathetic. I'm not going to lie to you. That is yeah. really pathetic. Um, so it's really, if you want to be, so if you want to be part of the 1%, 
um, have five to ten grand in your bank account and and, uh, your debt. and, and, and pay off your car or school yeah. or whatever. Uh, yeah, and, and then you will be in the top 10%. It's crazy. Um, anyway, uh, last thing, I really want to like close it off with this because I know you need to get going, Lou, mm-hmm. is, is, again, the reason why we keep bringing things up. The purpose of this podcast is, one, to teach and to inspire. Those yeah. are the two things, man. And, and for us, when you listen to us, when we, even when I start talking shit and start like dropping truths, man, that, that are honestly abrasive and painful, this is all of this information is for your burgeoning, for your benefit, for your progress, for your, to help you figure out what you need to do to have success. I want more competitors, dog. I hope that there's been a lot of people that have been listening to the podcast for years that find, they're like, I finally made a living from music this year. And that is amazing. I finally got my first client, made my first paid session. I finally got hired at a studio. I started interning, the, the, I, I, whatever. I graduated school, whatever it is. I love hearing this shit. And if you have the guts, the balls, the ovaries to, to, <laughs> to, to the hear intestines. this abrasive truth and accept your responsibility and push through, you will improve. You will improve. You will improve. And I really fully believe that. And if you, if you listen to our message, no matter how difficult it is, and find feel hope, feel you are impressed to be better, to do better. That is the entire purpose of this podcast. We are not here to put you down, to make you feel worse about yourself. We are here to empower you, to help you achieve your goals that you know you want and you know you deserve. Show us that you deserve it. Show yourself that you deserve it by putting in the work. We believe in you. We hope you the very best. Wish you the very best. Happy mixing, my friends, and stay saucy.